if your child has tested deficient for even one nutrient, that kind of gives us an idea the odds that they may be deficient in other nutrients increases. Now, if your child follows a special diet, like a gluten-free diet or a dairy-free diet, you may also consider supplementation because, again, just like you're missing out on certain nutrients when we have gaps in food groups, you can also be missing out on nutrients if you're avoiding all grains or you're avoiding all dairy. Is your child experiencing delayed potty training? Are you having a difficult time affording your incontinence care? If so, there's a solution at no cost to you. Our trusted partner, Aeroflow Urology, provides medical-grade continence care essentials like child pull-ups, adult briefs, bed pads, and more, free through your insurance. With Aeroflow, your favorite bladder control supplies are sent right to your doorstep with their discreet monthly deliveries. Customers have reported close to $200 a month in savings with Aeroflow Urology, and over 2 million people have trusted Aeroflow to verify their insurance benefits. All you need to do is fill out their quick two-minute form. Visit aeroflowurology.com slash nourishingautism. That's A-E-R-O-F-L-O-W-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash nourishingautism and let them know I sent you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nourishing Autism Podcast. I'm Britton, I'm your host. I'm so excited you're here. Today we're going to be talking about a really common topic. I get questions all the time. It's one of the most common DMs that shows up for me on Instagram, on Facebook, the comments on YouTube. You guys, this is a really important topic and it is on multivitamins. So if you have a child, the odds are you have considered giving them a multivitamin. You've probably questioned, is this necessary? What should I be looking for? Are the ones that I grab off the shelf, are they good enough? I'm here to answer all of those questions and more, especially when it comes to autism, because there are some things that we're looking for or that we're looking to avoid that are very specific to autism. I also have a fun special announcement that pertains to this topic that I'll be talking about toward the end of the podcast. But for now, buckle up, let's go, let's dive into multivitamins. Now, my thought on any supplement is that it is a great way to fill a nutritional gap or meet a specific nutritional need or maybe help with a particular symptom. Do I think that every single person needs to be on a multivitamin? No, there's no black and white answer if everyone on the autism spectrum needs to be on a multivitamin. Now, is it helpful? Probably, yes. The reason why there are a few risk factors that we are looking at when it comes to nutrient deficiencies, which is a big reason why we're taking a multivitamin in the first place to make sure that your child hits all of their nutritional needs. Now, if your child has a limited diet, they're a selective eater, and they're eating fewer than 20 foods, I would say even 30 foods. If you're listing out all of the different options and it's fewer than 20 foods, or they're missing a food group, so they don't eat any meat, they don't eat any vegetables, they don't eat any fruit, um, or maybe they eat just one or two things from those food groups, that is kind of a ping to me, hey, we are missing a big food group. The odds that we're missing some nutrients as well that are commonly found in that food group are pretty high. So that's where we want to start thinking, okay, is their diet limited? Are they missing out on big chunks of nutrition? Now, another reason why you might consider a multivitamin is if your child has tested deficient for a certain nutrient or group of nutrients. The odds that you've done this kind of testing are probably pretty low. Some pediatricians will flat out decline testing for nutrient deficiencies just because their wheelhouse isn't nutrition. They are going to be looking at a different set of labs. Now, they may be looking at iron or vitamin D, and those are great to look at, but we have vitamin A, all of our B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, E, K, and then we have other minerals that may also be deficient as well. And getting all of those drawn, not only is that a lot of blood, but it's also going to often be a big expense for you if you're going through insurance, if you're just interested. 
the better option there, and I won't get too far into lab testing. I'll have to save that for another episode. The better option is to do an all-inclusive micronutrient panel from an outside lab where you are going to pay out of pocket, but typically it's somewhere between $250 to like $400 to get all of it versus going through a typical lab and you you can, can't even guess how much they bill for some of those and you getting stuck with a sneaky bill. So just my personal thought, we'll definitely come back to that at another episode. But if your child has tested deficient for even one nutrient, that kind of gives us an idea. The odds that they may be deficient in other nutrients increases. Now, if your child follows a special diet, like a gluten-free diet or a dairy-free diet, you may also consider supplementation because again, just like you're missing out on certain nutrients when we have gaps in food groups, you can also be missing out on nutrients if you're avoiding all grains or you're avoiding all dairy. So we really want to keep that in mind as well. Now, that doesn't always mean that your child needs a multivitamin. It can mean they really need a specific supplement. So for example, let's say that your child doesn't eat any meat. It puts them at risk for zinc deficiency, B12 deficiency, and iron deficiency. Those would be some things that we would want to pay attention to. So Yes, they would benefit from a multivitamin, especially if their diet is, you know, more limited than that, but you can supplement with individual nutrients as well. Now, other reasons why we may consider a multivitamin is maybe if your child has gut issues. So if your child is eating even a a variety of foods in their diet and they have gut issues, like let's say chronic diarrhea or chronic constipation, it's possible that they may not be absorbing 100% of the nutrients from their food if they have digestive issues. So we want to make sure that we're thinking, okay, how much are they absorbing too? So we may consider a multivitamin if they do have gut issues. That is absolutely something that you could be exploring with your pediatrician. Um, Again, talking about outside panels, doing a comprehensive stool panel. Are there elevated markers that may show a lot of inflammation or something that indicates that your child may not be absorbing all of their nutrients from food? So those are just a few of the reasons why you may consider a multivitamin. If your child doesn't meet any of those, you could still take one It may just be some expensive urine. Some nutrients are going to be excreted through the urine, not all of them, but water-soluble vitamins like all of our B vitamins and vitamin C, if you take too much, they will just be peed out. So that's why we say expensive urine. If your child doesn't need it, your body will just spit it out. Your other vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K, those are fat soluble. And if you take large amounts of those, your body doesn't just pee them out, it stores it in fat. So we want to make sure that we're getting the right amounts, which leads me to what you should be looking for when it comes to a multivitamin, because the odds that you just run inside Target or Walmart and grab a vitamin and it's going to be really a good one, it's actually pretty low. So I want to talk you through what to look for. And this can also be helpful for all of my listeners who are not in the United States, because if I just start name dropping different products, the odds that they're accessible to you are pretty low too. But I want you to understand what to be looking for so that you can make this choice for your child. So we're going to go over five things that I really want you to be looking for. And I'll throw in a few bonuses if I think they're necessary. So number one, we want them to contain all of those fat soluble vitamins. We want them to contain vitamin A, D, E, and K. Those are fat soluble. Next, we want to contain all of our B vitamins or at least a majority of our B vitamins with special attention to both folate and B12. And not only do we want them to contain those B vitamins, we also want them to contain the active versions of those B vitamins. What I mean by that, there are certain forms of B vitamins that are cheaper to make and synthesize in a lab but your body has to do extra work to be able to convert it into the form that you really need. There are also certain genetic mutations that can get in the way of your body actually doing this. And we see some of those that are increased in autism. 
one in particular being folate. So you may be familiar with folic acid in a supplement. If you've ever been pregnant, you've probably been preached. You need 800 micrograms of folic acid instead of the regular 400. So that's the normal amount for women and pregnant women. It's especially important for the prevention of spina bifida and neural tube development. So it's really, really important. Now, folic acid is the lab synthesized form of folate. Folate is the B vitamin. Folic acid has to be converted in your body into another form to be able to actually use it. And that's called methylfolate. Your body has to use the methylfolate or activated folate. So when we take folic acid, your body has to go through a few steps and uses some genes to be able to methylate it. Now, we can just take the methylated form, and that is going to be the activated form. This is what I prefer for kids on the autism spectrum, unless you know that they are specifically sensitive to methylated vitamins. I have not seen a large percentage at all in the clients that I work with who are sensitive but it is possible, so definitely keep that in mind. If you notice an uptick in hyperactivity or something like that, we would just take a step down and use something else called folinic acid, which is the a little bit less methylated form, and some kids tolerate that better. But what I'm generally looking for is that most activated form. Same with B12. There's something called cyanocobalamin, which is the inactive form. I like looking for methylcobalamin or adenosylcobalamin. We want the active B vitamins. We also want it to contain at least 100% of vitamin C. So making sure that we're hitting the mark there. And so now we've gotten all of our vitamins. We've gotten all of our fat solubles all of our water solubles, and then we want to start thinking about minerals too. And for my fourth point, we want vital minerals like calcium, magnesium, zinc, iodine, chromium, molybdenum if possible. There are lots of minerals that are very beneficial, but these would be the ones that I'd especially be looking at. Now, calcium is an important one that you want in there. You will notice that I didn't say iron. Iron is a very important nutrient, very important mineral, but we don't want it in our multivitamin. Now, iron competes for absorption with other minerals, and so it gets in the way of absorbing those, especially calcium. So especially if you know that your child is low in iron, you actually want to take a separate iron supplement at a different time of day away from your multivitamin. So just remember, yes, iron is incredibly important. It's actually one of the top nutrient deficiencies. However, we do not want it in our multivitamin. And then a few last points. We want them to be third-party tested. We want to make sure that the manufacturing company is actually putting in it what they say they are. Now, what's kind of spooky is that multivitamins are not regulated by the FDA. So if you don't have third-party testing... A company could put out a multivitamin and say something's in it, but we haven't tested it to see. So we want to make sure that we have that check mark on third-party testing. Lastly, we want to make sure that we don't have any ingredients that shouldn't be there, like artificial colors and flavors or other allergenic ingredients, for example. Sometimes we can see dairy or gluten work its way into a supplement, and for kids who are sensitive, that is absolutely going to be a problem. We don't need those nutrients in there anyway. So we want, ideally, to have the smallest ingredient list possible, no added artificial ingredients especially. So that's what I'm looking for in general for a multivitamin. Now, everybody is unique in their nutritional needs, but this hopefully will help you at least get a good idea of what we are looking for. I want to go over one quick thing, which is actually taking a multivitamin. I would strongly encourage you, if your child has a limited diet, to not mix it in a preferred beverage or preferred food. The reason why is because if it changes the color or the taste or the texture, they may lose trust in that food. So when it comes down to multivitamins, we want to make sure that we have a separate 
regimented way of taking them. I like recommending the syringe method where your child is taking it through a medicine syringe mixed in some kind of liquid if your child can't take a capsule. Capsule when it comes to, or when it comes to sensory needs and aversions, capsules can be one of the best options, but for younger kids, powders mixed in a liquid using the syringe method generally is the best way to take a supplement. Now, I want to announce something really exciting that I haven't talked about much because it has been a process. And when I say that, I truly mean it, but I am so excited. If you follow me on Instagram, a month or two ago, I also announced this kind of off the cuff just because I'm so excited about it. And it's been kind of a secret for the past few years. Now it is not ready yet because I am such a perfectionist when it comes to the supplement that I keep tweaking and tweaking because it's just not right yet. Now, the importance of this multivitamin, what I'm striving for is for it to be a sensory-friendly multivitamin that a child could take with severe sensory aversions, that they could get in the most important nutrients, and that we're also not fire hosing them with like ten thousands of percent of a certain nutrient like many multivitamins do. Like I said, that is just some very expensive urine. So that is what we are working on. I'm really excited because I actually, I had planned on recording this episode anyway, and just kind of talking about the importance of multivitamins, who may benefit from one. And then all of a sudden I got my next sample in and I thought, you know, I wonder if I could just open the next sample on my podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see me open this. If you are listening on um, Apple Podcasts, you can imagine what I'm doing. I'll also be posting more information on Instagram that you can check out. You can follow us at Nourishing Autism Podcast on Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead and open this box. I'm going to move my keyboard and we are going to open up this box. Now, I made one big change to this multivitamin in this last round that is going to change the color to make it more disguisable because previously the color was bright, bright yellow, which you'll find in many multivitamins, and the uh, smell was a little bit more intense than what I wanted, so I've changed that. They've sent me four different samples here, and I'm going to open this first one. Wow, it barely smells like anything. Yay! Okay, oh my gosh, this is a big deal. Okay, I can drastically see the difference between the two. So my last one, it was, like I said, bright, bright yellow. Actually, I can show you all who are watching. It is this bright yellow color. When you mix it, I'll have to mix it later, but I'm so excited. It's here in this little vial. I want to try this. Ooh, I can already tell you. I just took a taste of the powder. This may be the winner. I'm so excited. Okay, there's a second option. I'm just gonna taste the powder. Now this is not mixing into a multivitamin or into water fluid. That one's a little less sweet, which actually may be a good thing. I think we have our winners. Now, if you want to get on the wait list for the multivitamin that hopefully we're releasing at the end of the year, I would love for you to jump on it. You can follow us on Instagram at Spectrum Sciences. And you will be able to find the wait list where you can add your name so that you will be one of the first ones. We are going to have a limited batch for the first batch of uh, supplement that we launch. And so I'd love for you to be one of the first people to get it. So be sure to do that. We'll also put the wait list in the show notes and you can follow Spectrum Sciences on Instagram. I am so excited, you guys. I am a little stunned to be maybe looking at the final version of this vitamin that we've been working on since it was my partner who reached out to me when I had Sam, which was November of 2022. So we've been working on this for almost 
two years and it's really exciting to see it come to fruition. So anyway, I hope this podcast was extremely helpful for you. If you are navigating, trying out a multivitamin to try and find one that is going to support your child's needs in the best way. And if you're looking for a multivitamin for a child on the autism spectrum and you want it to be sensory friendly because you haven't had luck getting any other nutrient or any other vitamin in them, definitely get on the wait list for Spectrum Sciences. I can't wait to launch it. Again, we're hoping for the end of the year, but I have to make sure it is perfect. <laughs> and so uh, bear with me while I make sure that it is the perfect supplement for your kiddos. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have an awesome rest of your week and I will see you on the next episode of the Nourishing Autism Podcast. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Nourishing Autism. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd love to invite you to join us inside of the Nourishing Autism Collective, an empowering and supportive community for moms of kids on the autism spectrum to get nutrition and picky eating support from me and my team of autism dietitians access my autism nutrition library, explore hundreds of kid-friendly recipes, connect with other moms on a similar journey, and learn from top autism experts like occupational therapists, speech therapists, and more. Come join us at nourishingautism.co. Also, if you enjoyed this podcast, I'd be so grateful if you shared it with a friend and gave it a five-star review on Apple and Spotify podcasts so I can spread the word about nutrition for autism and reach more amazing families like you. See you next time.